Welcome back to Dream Loudly, an I Impossible original show, and let's get rolling right into this episode because what we're going to be talking about today is more science. Mm -hmm. I love my science. I do to an extent. Science is great, especially when it has nothing to do with basketball and then is interjected into basketball as if it's some kind of genius developmental plan. Yeah, like, like it's at all applicable. And so that's what we're going to be talking about is the problems with research because anytime someone finds research, they can say the research says this and the research yep. says that. So this is why you have to train this way. And I don't think I've seen any legitimate basketball specific studies. No, there's, there's, I can barely find any, I, I can find some on shooting. Free throws. I think, I think that's maybe some of the easiest stuff to do, do this type of stuff with, but I just, most of the research that people are talking about has nothing to do with basketball. And it really can't. You know, I was, I was talking to someone who's really big in the um, constraint-led approach, and they said, Your, what you do can't be studied. There's too many factors and variables yeah. in what we do in our training. And so because it can't be studied, it can't be backed by science, and therefore they can't feel comfortable enough yeah being able to manage and predict the results. And so they're trying to come up with training that can literally be somehow mapped out, planned, and completely tracked and monitored. And that's the problem with basketball is there's too many factors, too many variables for a lot of research to mean anything. But what I want to do is just kind of jump into, you know, just some of the little bits of science and just talk about why we have seen completely different types of results. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna read this one. This was on a, a recent post on, um, on Instagram, but this just to me represents fully of, of some of these issues. So this is what he said. So how often should you fail? Learning is optimized when we fail 15% of the time. If you're always scoring 100%, you're probably not learning anything new. Researchers found that the sweet spot for learning is 85%. So. Before you go into it, let me just tell you what this research is. So what is this 85-15 rule based off of? And from what I have discovered, the research has been in computer programming, in machine learning, and some animal testing. And so artificial intelligence type of programs, <laughs> they do something in which they can learn at an 85% rate. And then the sweet spot for that machine learning is about right there. And then they've also done the studies on monkeys following dots and patterns and movement. Yeah. And so apparently because a monkey learns better at a 85% success rate, then they can say the research says this for basketball training. Yeah, and the, the, the part of this, I mean, I think it's again the social media fad of like everybody's trying to seem smarter than everybody else, that they're going to stuff like this and I, I honestly think most of the time, because I was just talking about this with a trainer today, even when trainers, you know, they want to just say stuff like, man, all I do all night long is watch basketball games. I just, I dig into it so deep. And then if you're digging into it that deep, why are we not seeing you produce things that not everybody's doing? Because if you're digging into something that deep, I would think that you would have something a little extra to give to the game that hasn't already been being done. I think it's the same thing when I watch people do this right now with like research stuff. Like, man, the research says, like you said, 85, 15. I feel like they read that statement one time, didn't really look into the statement on what it's talking about, and they were like, oh, well, that's just, that's just what the research says. Yeah, because says. the research says it. And that's one page. That's one page. I bet you I can find 50 different pages that say something different on what the learning curve actually is. Because when you study different things, you might get different results. Yeah. And, and so, but that's what bothers me so much is that people just throw that out. Hey, the research says this. You have to fail this, met, this much percent of the time. If you just say that flat out and then in your training, the person that you're training doesn't know where that research came from. Yeah. They're, and if you're a, a person of authority and in position as a basketball coach, they may be, well, research says it. <laughs> but how do, you, how do you even explore this? Like, how do you execute this right here? If you're training a player and you need them to succeed 85% of the time, that's the sweet spot. I mean, are you talking about making 85% of your shots? If they, if they start missing more than that, you got to make it easier? Obviously, we know you're not supposed to make 100% of anything or it's too easy. Yeah. So that's the all I can get out of that is, hey, 
If you're making 100% of your shots, or if you're never messing up, it's probably not that good. And not to say that, like I wasn't even thinking about that. It's like, okay, if I'm gonna apply that 85, 15% rule to everything I have a player do, how do I gauge that in ball handling? Do I count 100 dribbles? And if they got 85% of the dribbles, like we're good? Like I, I don't get where, like you, like you said that statement. And to me, I, it's gotta be you're applying it to shooting. Cause I don't know how you apply that to anything else. But if you did apply it to shooting and you're making 85% of your shots, then that's a bad shooting workout. Yeah. You know, unless we're talking straight spot shots and when you're trying, you know, Steph Curry making the basic threes the basic. in a row. Yes. But if you're doing a legitimate workout, if one of my players makes 85% of their shots, I need to increase the challenge Something. and the realism Absolutely. because the w when players are shooting in the game, 50% is phenomenal. And so we need to be able to train at a level in where 50% is actually an achievement. But a lot of times I think those workouts that you're talking about too are, are purely from a more emotional than anything. Like letting the player sit there, stand in a spot, go 10 out of 10 just so they feel good about themselves, which is fine. It has its place. Like we, we've talked about this confidence is, you know, a big part of the game, but I want to say the majority of workouts we see are that they're making feel way good. more than 85. It's feel good. It's emotional. But like, I would say the majority of the workouts I watch, even when the people that are talking about these concepts, they're not successful 85% of the time, they're probably sex successful 95 to almost 100% of the time. But a lot of times when I do watch these workouts, I wonder, are they really trying to execute this 85-15 rule? Because you look at these NBA players going through the motions, you know, and just easily succeeding at what they're doing. And you can say, yeah, they're probably not messing up more than 15% of yeah. the time in these workouts. Is, is that because they're trying to execute based on research? that doesn't even have anything to do with basketball. Yeah. So I think we need to separate to what kind of learning we're talking about. Yeah. That's why it has to be basketball specific. If I'm trying to teach you a skill and it's a challenging skill, then I need you to first learn to embrace failing over yeah. and over and over again. So the example that I think I've used in this podcast and I use all the time is there's times where I've had a young player, nine years old, doing a very advanced finishing series, like the one that we love, jumping over a mat, mat jumps. finding hang time, uh, underhand finish, get to the basket, which can be really, really challenging at a young age. And I've literally made players miss 100 layups in a row. Mm. And a lot of people would think that's too much. This, this research would say yeah, I'm ruining, ruining for life. Yeah. You know, I'm not in that sweet spot. But really, if I feel like they're close, if I feel like they can attain it, I will let them go zero out of 100 because you and I both know all we need their body to do is figure it out once. Mm -hmm. And once they figure it out once, all of a sudden, now they make three out of their next 10, four out of their next 10. And then it just snowballs from there because all we need their body to do is to figure it out. I think that's a, I think that's a big feel thing. Like, I think that's one of the things a lot of other sports talk about is like a feel and like, I mean, I think that, again, can come back to shooting is like you could be having a very poor shooting game. You could start the game 0 for 6, and you hit one, and it just feels right, and then it just snowballs. And that's a, we see the same thing with training all the time. Like, I brought my nephew in. I even posted a video, and it was just funny because he was having a blast, and he's young. And he missed had to have missed 25 to 30 underhand scoops in a row. Makes one. And it makes another, and makes another, and makes another. And it's like we see this too much to be like, oh, 85, 15, like that's how this works. Like this doesn't work like this. And that's why this research is just like, when you see it, it's like, no, that is incorrect. This, this is not how training works. And it, to me, it's a dangerous message mm -hmm. if people actually buy into this just because you said the research said it. And so, okay, maybe a computer does learn this way. Maybe an artificial intelligence program does learn this way. A human being for motor skills and learning skills does not. And in fact, if they do learn it this way, I'll just say it this way, it's gonna be a slow way of learning. Because we can speed up the learning curve by putting you in a challenging position, allowing you to, to fail, allowing you to mess up, knowing that all your body needs to do is learn how to do it once, and then all of a sudden it will click. The example we always use is learning how to ride a bike. Yeah. I'm in the process of teaching one of our sons how to learn a bike right now. And right now he can't figure out how to balance and hold his core up. And so he's gonna keep failing. And all it's gonna take is one time for him to really fun. control it. That's good, that's good. And his body will figure out how to do it. 
And I'm not going to try to be like, hold on, Gavin. We need to make sure that you're succeeding exactly 85% of the time. You're at 84% right now. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, one more time. And and so moving on to a different one. This is my issue in, you know, uh, the scientific world when it's trying to attach itself to basketball. Or I should say basketball people trying to attach itself to the scientific world. So here's another one. Harvard did a study that a lot of people are familiar with where, where we talk about leadership. And it goes something along the lines of when you're leading someone, you need to give them five positive affirmations for every one negative comment. And what it's trying to get people to do is try to lead people in the right way. Too much negativity yeah. is going to be bad for them in their overall development. Okay, This is a leadership topic. But yet, people are taking this to basketball. And I can tell you, if you're trying to train someone effectively in basketball and try to bring their skills up, the last thing you want to do is go positive, 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 negative when the kid stinks. (laughs) Like It's just not how it works. So it's once again, it's taking a study that's about leadership. It has like divorce rates and stuff. If a husband is being too negative and they're barely ever saying positive things to their wife, that will lead to divorce. Yeah. How does that relate to basketball? So from a basketball skill perspective, where does this fit? So the, these, these are the ones that, that I struggle with because, like, number one, I, I, whether it's the 85, 15, or, or it's this one, you can't apply that same logic to every player no matter what. I think we've talked about this with even, like, you get into school system stuff. You can't take 20 kids, put 85, 15 out of them, how many of them are going to be successful? Of how many? Yeah, how many out of those 20? Say that again. If you applied the 85, 15 rule to 20 players and ran with that, how many What we just did? I don't know, one or two? That's what I mean. Like, I feel like of both these, which, whichever one it is, it's like, like okay, maybe, maybe that, you know, five positive comments for this kid for every one negative. Maybe that's his personality a little bit. So maybe maybe that can fit in there a little bit. But I don't I don't think most players need that. Most players, when we have them come here, are actually very happy that we're correcting every single rep almost. We might give them five reps and just run it to figure it out. But most most of them are more frustrated that this is what trainers are doing to them. Like we go here, guy's very positive, he's nice, but he doesn't correct anything. I mean, we've seen the workouts over and over again where you – you see the coach saying good every rep. Good. Every rep. Great job. It's trainer's favorite word right there. Good. 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 Does, it, does it the same way? It just happens to make it, so it's good. Now, it could be that the trainer doesn't really know much, so they're just trying to be positive. Yep. Or they're trying to follow this research, because I've heard people talk about it. Hey, yep. you got to be positive five times to every one negative. So you're saying lies. Yep. Good, 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 good. So you can finally correct them. That's going to be so confusing, because the kid, once you finally correct him, is going to be like, did it wait well, a minute. Right? You've just yeah. said good. I've been doing it the same thing, same thing every time. That, that one's a hard one. I don't. I, I can't see where that would ever fit in basketball, especially in the skill training side of what we're we're looking at. Like I just don't know where at all I can fit that logic in training a player because the research is taken out of context. So number one, we need to define what negative actually means. Yeah. Right. So the research is talking about heavy things like divorce rates yeah okay so arguments between married couples yeah you have probably as a married man of 17 years now you need to be careful of your words absolutely okay and that and so in that environment i gotta be really careful about correcting my wife five to six times in a row before i ever say anything nice to her yeah in basketball it's a different environment if i say no that's not negative. It's just truthful. And so if you do it bad, I'm not going to say good. Yeah. I'm going to say, nope, nope, not yet. And if you train with me, this is what you're going to hear over and over again. Nope, not yet, not yet. Yeah. And then even when you do it kind of there, I'm going to be a little bit closer. But I think, I think you hit something on the head right there. It's you're, you're, you're saying no, but people are picturing that as you're screaming at the kid. Like, I think that's how people are like, like taking that. It's like, it's like the tone of voice with it. But me just being like, no, your foot didn't get it that time. Yeah, you That's just correcting. Demeaning them is different. That's different. Yeah. So that would be negative. And so if I was to take this to basketball, I would have to say, 
you know, for every one time you demean them, <laughs> make, sure, make sure that you say five positive every things. Every time you Bobby Knight them, you yeah. got to make sure you get a good one in if there. If you never demean them, like we never demean a player, no. then you don't have to worry about this stat at all. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. Because everything is positive. Yeah. I'm going to tell you good things, and I'm going to tell you when you get things wrong, and I'm going to celebrate you when you finally get them great. Absolutely. That would work. But people literally will, will, will try to teach players based on this research, and it becomes a fake, unauthentic, undetailed, bad environment simply because they're trying to find and follow the science. Yeah. It's madness, Bryce. It's madness. <laughs> Help them, Bryce. And, and when you go through our trainer certification, we talk about telling players yeah, the truth talk about this. Yeah. without being hurtful. Yeah. That's the same message. We're not going to cuss at them. We're not going to scream at them. We're not going to demean them. We're not going to call them stupid just because they can't get it. But I will tell you, hey, you still didn't get it. And they'll be like, really? No, nope, yeah. still didn't get it. Your body's not getting it. Oh, we show it to them. See, still not it. So every time you're doing it wrong, I'm reminding you, still didn't get it. Yeah. Still didn't get it. And, and to me, it gives them that motivation when they finally hear a good, it means something. Like, it means, yeah, exactly. It, it actually you know, means You're getting something. closer and you need yeah. to know that. So that would be uh, another one. So uh, this is happening a lot. I'll give one more example. I've recently heard of another one of people using learning foreign languages. Mm -hmm. So learning foreign, foreign languages by going into the environment. Oh, yeah. And so that's being used a lot for basketball training. And so here's what that research would show. That if you were to learn Spanish, for instance, some research has shown that you can learn that language easier by being immersed in the culture, by going and actually being there. By the way, it doesn't work for me. I try to learn it both ways. My Spanish teacher literally, I took three years of Spanish. Yeah. I don't know any Spanish. You know, I, I, I remember I went to Mexico and I would freeze up in any foreign language ever all the time. And I've had a really hard time with foreign language. This is gonna be a rabbit trail, I'll come back. So I'm in, in Mexico, and literally people s say something to me in Spanish, and I'd be like, you know. No, no chance. <laughs> no. <laughs> no Espanol. <laughs> and then they literally would, oh, okay, this person doesn't speak Spanish. They didn't ask me again something in English, and I'd still be so frozen up. I'd be like, no Espanol. And they'd be like, does this dude speak anything? <laughs> like, that's me in foreign language. But my Spanish teacher did that all the time. We would watch movies in Spanish. Did nothing for me. Because yeah. I don't know enough of the movie to know what they're saying anyway. Yeah. It didn't help me by reading the subtitles as they said Spanish. Being in Spanish class, she would sometimes go on these 20 minute things where she spoke nothing in Spanish. I learned nothing. Yeah. So it doesn't always work anyway. But even if it did, what, they take that research of something about learning a foreign language and they say you need to immerse them in the game or you need to immerse them in small-sided games or, or have an actual body there. They need to be immersed in the culture of basketball in order for something to work. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't always connect like that yep. because we're talking about learning a sport and a motor skill compared to learning a foreign language. Yep. So you said it this way. Sometimes I think people are trying to sound smart. Yeah. I think this is coming from people maybe wanting to sound smart, but they're just trying to predict results. Yep. Because everyone's so result-oriented. They want to have a way to, to predict transfer so badly that they will take research out of context hoping that they have some kind of formula that will work. Yep. It's just going to disappoint a ton of people. I agree. And we've, we've seen it over and over and over again with players that, you know, you're going to have a different path than everybody else. Let's work on your skills, point you in the right direction, and allow you to succeed at your own rate. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be this formula where I can just say, here's the way human beings learn, just like monkeys do, by the way. And if you follow this path, this yeah. is going to be your result. Yep. So let's stop with the research until... They it's actually actual come up with basketball-specific studies. Mm -hmm. And then the other stuff should just be guidelines. Yep. You know, hey, this is an interesting theory, theory that came out of this. Let's see if I can apply some of the logic, but don't just throw out statements like research. Because this works here. This has to work here, too. So yay for science. Yeah. But let's, let's uh, be patient yeah. in, in how it approaches uh, the game of basketball. I agree. Well, that wraps up another episode of Dream Loudly. We'll see you next week as we discuss something else amazing. See you next time.